okay guys so let's move on to pumps which is the final section of module 2 so we are done with boilers and turbines and now this is the third part which is pumps so so what is a pump so i mean this is something you might have seen in your homes or apartments or even industries so a pump is a device it's a work consuming device which is used to move liquids from low potential energy to high potential energy that is it increases the pressure of the liquid so it basically it's a device it's a hydraulic machine which converts uh, mechanical energy into hydraulic energy okay so let's move to classification of pumps so pumps can be classified in two categories positive displacement pumps and non positive displacement pumps so what they are in detail so first is positive displacement pump so they operate by forcing a fixed volume of liquid from the inlet section of the pump into the discharge zone of the pump okay so this is based on a fixed volume of fluid and the pressures are generally much higher than non positive displacement pumps we'll go to non positive displacement pumps later so then uh, for the classifying non positive sorry positive displacement pumps uh, we get into rotary type and reciprocating type so a rotary type positive displacement pump um uh, can move the liquid or uh, the fluid by using a, a rotating mechanism that creates a vacuum while drawing in the liquid so a rotary positive displacement pump can be classified further rotary type in the positive displacement pump can be further classified into integral gear pump and screw pump it's okay don't we don't have to get into the details of that uh then once we move to uh, so next we move to a uh, reciprocating type so as you know reciprocating is something which moves to and fro right so uh, a reciprocating pump is used for uh, it uses a oscillating piston or a cylinder you know much like the functioning of um, an engine you know where there is piston cylinder arrangement and uh, we uh, just use the reciprocating motion of this piston within the cylinder to draw the fluid okay so we'll get the ic engines uh, part later in the next module which is which covers in detail about all these things so now yeah so this in the reciprocating type at uh, positive displacement pump so we uh, convert this reciprocating action into uh, the discharge of the fluid so this is further classified into piston pump and diaphragm pump so next moving to classification of the pumps as non display non positive displacement pump Uh, so they are basically used as i mentioned earlier for low pressure applications and they work to a maximum pressure of 18 to 20 bar okay flow is a constant with changing pressure in a positive displacement pump but flow varies with changing pressure in a non positive displacement pump okay so a non positive displacement pump uh, can be classified as a centrifugal pump and submersible pump so in this section that is uh, for our syllabus we mainly focus on centrifugal pump and uh, reciprocating type pump classify this diagram into four segments okay the lower segment that is suction pipe and sump level as one then the cylinder arrangement as one the delivery arrangement as one and towards the right the mechanical working as one okay yeah so the working again is given here in detail so this is the explanation that you can give if they ask you know this question uh, as a separate one uh, big question okay the parts the working and the diagram so let's move on to uh, centrifugal pump centrifugal pump is a hydraulic machine which converts mechanical energy to hydraulic energy that is the pressure energy by the use of a centrifugal force so what is centrifugal force you must have played in the merry go round right so as it rotates centrifugal force is created much similar to that the centrifugal force here is used to move the liquid from one end to the other okay and the movement of the liquid here takes place in the radially outward direction which is uh, contradictory to what you learned in francis turbine previously where the liquid was moving in the radial inward direction okay so this is the difference of between the two uh 
to the diagram yeah so yeah this diagram again you know much similar to the reciprocating pump can be uh, divided into three segments okay one is the suction part at towards the left and the lower end then the impeller and the casing as the central section and then the delivery uh, side that is towards the upper side and the tank okay so it uh, works on the working principle here the force vortex flow this concept is important okay so just make sure you mention this so the force vortex flow is nothing but uh, when a certain mass of fluid or liquid is allowed to rotate by an external torque so the impeller is made to rotate okay and the fixed amount of liquid there uh, causes a rise in pressure head of the rotating fluid okay this rise in pressure head is used to deliver water from one location to the other it is centrifugal force acting on the fluid that makes the uh, flow within the casing okay so this centrifugal action causes the suction here and the water from the pump is uh, for the, sorry from the sump uh, moves upwards to, through the suction pipe onto the suction flange and then into the casing and through the casing it further flows upward through the delivery flange through the delivery valve onto the delivery pipe and finally to the overhead tank okay this is something you would have seen in your homes as well okay so the main parts are the impeller that is a rotating section the casing uh, which covers the impeller and provides uh, protection from external accidents and suction pipe with a foot wall and strainer and delivery pipe again with the delivery flange and delivery wall okay yeah so i have again already so there are three types of casings volute casing vortex casing and casing with guide blades there are three types of casings um, which you will have to mention at least you know when you write about the casing okay yeah so the suction pipe is a pipe uh, whose one end is connected to the inlet of the impeller and the other end is onto the sump the foot wall okay this is an important part so is is a one way wall like i said you know these walls are designed such that it opens only in the upward direction okay it it allows the water to flow in only in one direction the strainer is used to filter the unwanted particles present in the water to prevent the centrifugal from from blockage so it prevents any kind of blockage okay so yeah the working is again i have mentioned i uh, explained uh, before let's see if i missed anything electrical motor starts rotating so that's what causes the impeller to rotate so this rotating action creates a suction and this suction causes the water to flow from the sump it moves upwards onto the casing into the impeller from the eye of the impeller it centrifugal force causes the water to flow in the radially outward direction onto the casing and through the delivery flange and the walls it moves upwards onto the tank okay the area of the uh, casing increases gradually in the direction of rotation and the pressure increases and uh, the pressure is maximum at this point now from the outlet of the pump the to its desired location through the delivery pipe okay so that completes the centrifugal pump so then the difference between the centrifugal pump and reciprocating pump uh it's yeah pretty i mean going by the working phenomena of these two you can figure it out so what you see is centrifugal pump is something that works continuously the flow discharge you no know, it happens continuously but the reciprocating pump happens in a non continuous way you can see visualize the working of a reciprocating pump with that of a hand pump you know if you would have seen uh, or probably even used it you know which used to exist a uh, few decades earlier so you do the pumping action and the water moves upwards slowly right it's discontinuous you know every time you pump it uh, it gives a brief amount of uh, breaking period where there's no water discharge and then again it starts to flow okay so generally a centrifugal pump is used for high viscous fluid because it's continuous and uh, the efficiency is much higher so but at the same time in centrifugal pump a priming problem exists we'll get into priming uh, as the next topic okay and then but at the same time why we use it at homes is because it is lighter in weight and maintenance is less a reciprocating pump uh, maintenance is much higher and it's also bulky it occupies a lot of space similarly uh, it a centrifugal pump as i mentioned is used for Uh, domestic purposes and reciprocating pumps is used in industries or hilly areas okay so now let's move to two issues associated with pumps so the first is priming and the second one is cavitation so what is priming is is a blockage or inter, uh, is a blockage in terms of you know, air uh, stuck or the gaps present inside the 
pumping action okay so it is the operation in which uh, the in order to avoid this uh, blockage or uh, the presence of uh, you know uh, this uh, air or this thing uh, it is made to fill with water with outside source of water not the water from within the pump okay so it is the operation in which the impeller suction and the delivery uh, are completely filled with outside source of water for starting the pump thus this operation removes the air present in the parts of the centrifugal pump there should not be any air uh, present within the pump when it starts so that is why it's made to fill so uh, priming requires that the walls must be provided uh, before and after the pump a foot wall like i mentioned you know previously is normally fitted at the lower end of the suction pipe and for keeping the water in the pump then the water is uh, then pump is started and it opens to permit the water to enter the suction pipe but closes as soon as the pump is switched off so it makes sure that there is no backward flow of water from the center section of the pump and back to the sump okay yeah it's i mean make sure that there is no priming action caused so priming is carried out for centrifugal pumps mostly and for uh, smaller pumps priming is done by pouring water directly onto the pump through a funnel provided at the top of the casing so next is cavitation so what is a cavity you know you don't even have to get into the depth of this uh, cavitation concept if you know what is a cavity cavity is nothing but a, a dug out space uh, which should not be there on a smooth surface or a leveled surface correct so how is cavity caused how are cavities caused for example your de dentist must have told you many times cavities are uh, present in your uh, teeth right so there is a dug out section which should not have been there so how does it happen in pumps so where does it happen in pumps so it happens at the parts of the pump that is mainly the impeller or the blades should not have any cavities so this reduces the efficiency of the pump and how are they caused so cavitation is the procedure in which high pressure bubbles impact onto the blades and these blades are subjected to uh, this high pressure bubbles and in turn cause the cavities within them okay so the main purpose or reason for this happening is the pressure at any point okay with the suction side should not fall below the vapor pressure which causes the water to boil or the bubbles to happen uh, this formation of saturated vapor bubbles uh, move at a very high velocity as i mentioned and impact the impeller blades and collapse after strike so in this way as the pump uh, continues to function uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, the more and more bubbles get formed and impact uh, these blades and uh, this process takes place several thousand times a second and damages the blade of the pump so this process is called cavitation so the effects being uh, noise and vibrations are produced then the surface gets damaged and this reduces the efficiency of the pump and uh, loss of material due to pitting so the best way to avoid uh, this cavitation is to use a better material mostly cast iron is used so instead of that if you could use stainless steel or nickel steel uh, this pitting action can be avoided and another way is to ensure that the pressure of the fluid uh, in any part of the system should not fall below the vapor pressure so what is vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by the vapor above the liquid surface okay we, you don't have to get in depth just remember that the pressure should not fall below the vapor pressure okay so yeah this completes the pump section as well as uh, module so okay let's see from how we proceed next thank you